If you guys need some coins for Madden 21, go to my sponsor, MuttTeamGo.com. They have the cheapest and most reliable Madden coins online. And make sure you use my code WIN, W-I-N, at checkout for 5% off your order. We'll link in the Inside the Mind video today, guys. We're going to do a full weekend league gameplay. You're going to see most of, or at least pieces of, my brand new offense in this video. If you guys are new to the channel, like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell. Like always, let's jump into it. All right, guys, so Inside the Mind gameplay today. This is a weekend league game, and what I'm going to be looking at and what I'm going to be kind of going up against here is a couple different things. So first of all, I need to be prepared on defense. So whenever I go into these games, I'm trying to figure out again what my opponent is going to do on offense and just how to adjust to it. And typically, if we're able to do that, we're going to get better as the game goes on on D, and that's a priority. Now on offense, because we're getting the ball first, we want to make sure that we just don't turn the ball over. That's, that's priority number one but we get an idea of what type of player uh, our opponent is on defense. So there's so many different ways of playing defense in Madden 21. There's the man meta, you know, man press with, um, you know, actually just man press, and then you also have man with the curl flats on the field. Then you also have people running man and sending, you know, seven at you. You also have people running cover three and cover two and mixing up defenses all over the place, people just sitting in cover three. So it really is uh, an interesting year in Madden where there's not just one way to play defense right now. And, you know, you have to be prepared for all of them, and you have to have an offense that can beat all different styles of defense. So uh, I, this looks to me like it could be cover two. Uh, I put a cover two beater on the field. I was not correct, but I did have this little safety valve over here to the left side and hit Delvin Cook for a nine yard gain. Barely made the read in time, to be honest, because I again thought it was cover two for sure, and it was not. Now, if he's gonna run man, we're gonna we're gonna run, come out in our man one play touchdown play, and. Uh, Again, I'm a little bit worried because I'm not knowing this opponent for sure whether he's just switching it over to zone from play to play, and he certainly does not. Sends the heat again in man and catches me off guard. So again, you can see he's sending pinch buck O, so essentially sending seven people at us. And now we do have threat detector on, so we've got a really good idea that, hey, he's sending the heat again. What do we need to do to just bomb him? So we're blocking as many people as we can. We're only sending two routes out on the field, and... He is not able to get home, and we know this is a one-play touchdown if we only get single coverage against him. So, Stefan Diggs, easy touchdown down the right side of the field, and we are now up seven early in the game. So, again, this strong close offense that I run, check it out. I've got a mini scheme, specifically just on what I'm doing in this video. I'm essentially only running strong close so far. Um, it is really, really powerful, and... It does beat all different types of coverages, and it beats it for one-play touchdowns, and that's what I really, really like about it. You don't have to go down the field and put a 12, 15-play drive together. You can just get a one-play touchdown, get to defense, and you know worry about uh, stopping your opponent. It, it's much more stress-free to get big plays than it is to work down the field slowly. You can certainly do that as well in strong close, but... You just don't need to because the bombs are there. So, coaching adjustments. So, we're on D. I almost always go into a man alignment here. Option defense is just always going to go in conservative. And then I mess around with the curl flats a lot. Put them on 20 yards, 15 yards, 5 yards even sometimes. But you will see in this video that I'm doing something that I don't normally do on defense. So, I'm in big nickel over G and I'm playing on the safety. And I, I started to lab this a little bit and just thought, let's give it a shot. Let's run it in weekend league for a little bit. Let's see if it's something that's actually useful because typically I'm sitting on you know Taylor Mays who's sitting at a linebacker position and stuff like that you can see me making my subs so I'm putting some cornerbacks in at safety and I'm putting um, some safeties in at linebacker so we've got a lot of DBs on the field here but again you can see me running man press and running over the top coverage with cur one curl flat on the field and then I'm using the other safety again just something I'm trying thought I would give it a good good college try I guess you could say in this video um, but my opponent so far is just a run-heavy opponent. Just wants to run the ball, run the ball, run the ball. So we do have to adjust to that, and we have to be prepared for it. Third and three, he is able to just muscle through to get the first down there. Uh, that's kind of a frustrating thing about Madden 21 versus previous Maddens. You almost always fall forward when you're the ball carrier. So it's kind of one of those things that, you know, you just got to kind of live with it, and you got to move to the next down, next play. Um, but we have seen our opponent just run, 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 run. And he's doing a good job of getting big yards on first down. So when he's getting first first down carries of seven to eight yards, that's setting him up really well to just kind of work down the field slowly, use the clock, control the game, 
And that's what a lot of these running opponents will do, right? And I'm certain you guys have run up against it too. They do a really good job of managing the clock, limiting possessions, and, you know, in his ideal world here, he runs the entire first quarter out, goes into the second quarter, runs the entire second quarter out too, and he, you know, gets into the end zone, 7-7 seven, seven game going in the second half, and he gets the ball first. So uh, we have to make sure we prevent that. He's got a fourth and one here. I was totally expecting the run. Hits me with a really, really nice slant route. I had literally nobody in coverage where he threw that, so... Really good play by my opponent. Good read. That is his first pass of the game. So definitely caught me off guard on it. Now, he's done a really good job again of you know just doing really good plays on first down, and he just catches me here. Uh, stuck in the middle of the field, kind of caught in traffic, and he's able to get to the outside, get the touchdown, and we are now tied 7-7 in the first quarter. And that's kind of a frustrating drive. Uh, he threw the ball one time. And it was on fourth and one. He gains 10 yards on it. And now it, it feels like um, it's just kind of a failure, even though it's no big deal. It's tied 7-7. We get the ball. There's still over a quarter left to go in the first half. So anyway, back to uh, returning the ball. So this is another thing that I always do, guys. I almost always bring the ball out of the end zone. And that's mainly because I want to be either on a hash or I want to be close to a hash. Uh, it just works better at a strong close to not be in the middle of the field. So our opponent has uh, been sending heat in man defense. So uh, I'm kind of considering here, is he going to switch to his own defense, or is he going to stick in this man rush, right? So I'm putting a couple different routes on the field just to prepare for if he's in man, we can beat him, and if he's in zone, we can beat him. I take a little check down there, and probably not a real great read, but... You know, incomplete pass, that's fine. We we do see now that he's still running man defense and he's still sending the heat out of it. So we're going to go back to the one play touchdown that we just beat him with and we're going to see if we can catch him in it again. Now again, the last time I ran it, I blocked as many people as I could and just sent two routes out. This time I am sending a third route out. Um, and I can see his user over there peels off to go guard it and leaves DK Metcalf on the other side of the field wide open. And here we go, marching down the left side. Do a, a, do a really, really poor and jerky stop and go there. But it works, I guess. And we're able to get in the end zone and go up 14-7. to seven. Um, So our opponent so far has just been sending seven, sending seven, sending seven. And uh, he did get home one time. But other than that, we've hit him for two one-play touchdowns. I think the combined yardage on those one-play scores are 75, 80 yards, something like that. So... 14-7, to 7, and now we've got to try to focus on stopping him. And he's done a really good job of running the ball. And it's just really hard to stop the run game in Madden 21, especially when you have an opponent that kind of knows what they're doing with it. Uh, I will say that he's not doing a great job of keeping me off guard with mixing in the pass very frequently, but um, kudos to him. If you can run the ball and you can keep moving down the field with it, keep doing it, right? So, again, I'm playing on a safety here and trying to essentially overcompensate. Well, actually, here I come out and cover three and hits me with a really, really nice play call. A uh, little counter action there and was not expecting it. Actually shot the gap towards the inside, and he ran out. So really good job. Um, but we've got to try to figure something out here. We, we've been really, really unsuccessful. And, again, ideal for him right now. He's actually in a really good position, right? Uh, he's, he's working the clock. He's got the ball. He's in, in, as far as he's concerned, is he is concerned, complete control here because I haven't been able to stop his run game. And all he needs to do is work the clock out, get seven before half, and it'll be tied going into the second half, and he gets the ball first. So we've got to try to prevent that. Uh, typically, I would start being a little bit more aggressive on defense here. And I think he was expecting me to fully commit to the run game here. And he makes a really poor read. Uh, so he's thrown two passes now. One was on fourth and one for 10 yards. The second one was him trying to play action, catch me sleeping, and he threw a pick on it. So now it's our ball. We've got three minutes left in the second half, and we have an opportunity to go up two scores before we give the ball back to him to start the third quarter. So I have beat him two times now on one-play touchdowns in man defense. Now... I've got an idea that I, I need to at least see if he's going to continue to stay out in man coverage or if he's going to start switching up his defense here. So I hit him with a new play here again. This is the Minnesota Vikings playbook, and I see him in a cover three cloud. So if he's going to stay in cover three, 
uh, we're going to try to hit him with a cover three bomb. And <laughs> it's going to really frustrate him if he hits it. And I can see the adjustment. You know, the cornerbacks are misaligned. So that definitely tells me that that is probably the cover three cloud. So I put the cover three bomb on the field here. And lo and behold, he is in the cover three cloud. And we're able to hit Stefan Diggs over the top for a big gain. So we're going to be down to the two-minute warning here. We are now inside his 20-yard line. And all we need to do is work the clock, get a touchdown, get to the second half. Let's be up two possessions. And let's just make sure that you know we take care of the ball. So that's, that's the most important thing here. So again, it's been cover three cloud a lot. And this time, I am again seeing that the cornerbacks are misaligned. Uh, and again, this goes back to some of the reading the defense things that I've done videos on before. But that tells me that it's not a cover two. We're in a cover three here. But we are able to hit the little hitch route. Um, and again, cover three cloud. But I'm literally just making that read. Uh, whenever you see a cover three cloud, typically the cornerbacks aren't going to be at the same depth. And you're going to be able to make that read on it. But if he's in cover three cloud here again, I'm going to hit Delvin Cook on the wheel route for the easy touchdown. Um, and I'm setting it up. DK Metcalf goes to the outside, put him on an out route. And boom, we hit him for a nice little low ball pass and easy score. So the only downside of what happened here is I scored a little fast, right? So I left him some time. He's got a little, little under a minute and a half left uh, to get down the field, put a score together. And if he does, he can make it 21 to 14. Ah, uh, 20 to 14 as I miss the extra point so hopefully that doesn't come back to haunt me but we do need to make sure that we're doing whatever we can to make sure that he's not get even if he gets three that's fine but we want to make sure he doesn't get a touchdown and his offense hasn't shown any explosiveness so far so I'm feeling pretty good about it but we need to make sure that again we're just kind of throttling him back making sure that he can't get any good can't get any big plays and we just do whatever we can to just kind of manage the drive even if he has to slowly work it down the field but he wants to run the ball and we just want to make sure that if he does pass the ball it's going to be a little bit of a nightmare for him he makes a really poor read right there we should have had a pick um, but it is second and 10 now so uh you know, gun spread offense, uh, it's fine, uh, but it, it's its something that you really, really need to know how to do if you're going to run it, and his, that's actually a pretty good read right there. you got to give it to the opponent there, um, but um, this opponent's really, really a run-heavy player, and to see him make the transition from, you know, really run-heavy formations into more of a gun spread is it's kind of an unusual transition to me i guess i would say so we've got him completely bagged here he makes an actual pretty good read but he shouldn't have lobbed the ball he should have bullet passed that thing and he probably would have had a pretty big game there but we're able to get the pick and that forces our opponent to quit out of the game but hopefully you guys enjoyed the inside the mind version of this uh that is the video if you guys are new to the channel like comment subscribe but like always till next time win madden